Hello everybody and welcome to our spiritual communion service for this festival of the baptism of Christ, the first Sunday of Epiphany. Uh, it has been lovely to be in church, even though in a rather restricted way, over the Christmas season. And perhaps no surprise that we find ourselves here once more gathered spiritually, even though physically at a distance once more, hopefully keeping safe and hopefully driving the spread of the virus down by staying at home and uh, being as safe as we can. So apart, we come together once more for our spiritual communion service. I'm slightly rusty uh, in the singing department, certainly, but possibly in the where are my pieces of paper department as well. So I hope it goes relatively smoothly. I know you're all marvellous and lovely people, so you'll forgive me if it isn't smooth and perfect. So in the name of God, the one who makes us walks with us and inspires us. Amen. And so to begin. We light a light in the name of the Maker. The Maker who lights the world and breathes the breath of life for us. We light a light in the name of the Sun. The Son who saves the world and stretches out his hand to us. We light a light in the name of the Spirit. The Spirit who encompasses the world blesses our souls with yearning. If you haven't already done so, you're invited to light your candle or candles at this point. We light three lights for the Trinity of Love, God around us, God beside us, God within us, the beginning, the end, the everlasting one. Amen. Our first song this week is a song from the Teze community. I thought we wouldn't test ourselves too vigorously as on this first week back with me singing on my own and hopefully you joining in from where you are as well. And so we'll sing, Bless the Lord, my soul. Hopefully um, all of this material has come through to you um, from Louisa uh, in the usual way, either through a hard copy or uh, electronically. So hopefully you've got the words of bless the Lord my soul, bless God's holy name, bless the Lord my soul who leads me into life. Bless the Lord my soul and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Come to us this day, with friend, with stranger, with young and with old. Be among us today, come close to us, that we may come close to you. Forgive us, that we may forgive one another. Renew us, so that where we have failed, we may begin again. Amen. The Collecton readings for this uh, celebration of the baptism of Christ. Heavenly Father at the Jordan, you revealed Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now if you have your own copy of the readings, you're very welcome to pause the video at this point and do the readings for yourselves. 
or you're welcome to listen to me. And our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, beginning at the first verse. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples and said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said to them, Into what then were you baptised? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Our song with which we welcome the Gospel reading, our gradual, is The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust. In God I trust. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Question for us then today, as we remember and celebrate Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan, a point at which we're very often used to thinking of as the beginning of Jesus' ministry. If we think about beginnings and perhaps our beginnings, where did you begin? Where did your story, the story of you and your life, begin? Is this a birth story? Did you begin the day, the night you were pushed out by the waves? of fierce contractions, evicted from the dark womb into the light of the world? Did you begin in the liaison between your parents that perhaps most of us would prefer not to think about on a Sunday, thank you very much, a moment when your own unique mix of DNA was created? Did you begin farther back in history? Are you part of a great and noble race, a shoot from a distinguished family tree? Perhaps the part of you that is most you, came from an ancestor's participation in one of history's great migrations, the crossing of a continent, the journey from the Caribbean, a ferry from Calais. Maybe some of us are not as old as our bodies. Maybe the real you began on a day of great awakening in your own mind. Or perhaps the day you met your soulmate and you began living for and with someone else became someone else in that moment. Perhaps the real you began the day you finally decided to be sober for good. Beginnings, whatever they are, 
are important. We all know that. They tell us who we are, where we come from, and very often they will point to where we're going in life. The Bible, of course, has a very well-known story about the beginning, and some of us know it almost by heart. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind of God hovered over the face of the waters. God sets down in this story in the midst of a formless darkness. God draws near the empty waste. God gazes into the waters that would not or could not bear life. And from this, in this face-to-face -face encounter, a living world begins. God orders chaos in the story of creation in Genesis. The creator who stares and speaks into nothing until there is something, something good, as God describes it over and over again. Many believe that this story of beginnings in Genesis was written down for the first time during the exile of the Israelites in Babylon. What that tells us is that this is not the oldest story in the Bible. So it must be placed first for some other reason. And I think that reason is that this kind of beginning story is the kind that we need. It's the most important kind of beginning, a story that shows us God looking into chaos and making goodness. Because when the world feels like chaos, when we find ourselves trapped in the formless void of loss or grief or despair, when God seems to be nowhere, in that time when we are desperate for a new beginning, we have this story. We have a creating God who reshapes the chaos into order, even into beauty. Beginnings happen every day. When I think of my own beginnings, there is the day in 1960 in Stratford-upon-Avon when I was born. There is the day in 1978 when I arrived at Loughborough University and life changed. I changed. There is a day the Bishop of Peterborough laid hands on my head in 1988. Life changed then. There are the wedding bells a couple of years later. Birth cries a couple of years after that. Pilgrimages on Iona when I felt at home in the church. Kicks in the teeth from diocesan structures when I wanted to pack the whole thing in. Silent nights. Silent Fridays. Wagnerian climaxes. Life is full of beginnings. Many, as T.S. Eliot reminds us, coming from our endings. So whether it's with a lefty bunch on an island in the Atlantic, or maybe a neighbourhood watch that you've become part of, or a young parents group that you've recently joined, or even this church at St George's that you've become part of, wherever people gather to look into the chaos of our experience, we speak and create order because we do what God does. We echo the voice of the creator who brings new life from the murky depths of the chaos in our lives. Beginnings are important. They tell us who we are and they tell us where we're going. One of the mistakes Christians sometimes make, our culture often makes, is that when we think about the Bible, we think it's only got one beginning story. In fact, the Bible is a collection of books that has dozens of beginnings, maybe hundreds. Many of them echo this same theme, the creation of order out of chaos. That's not a bad way to think about the significance of John the Baptist, who appears in the wilderness shouting and demanding that people rise up to take responsibility for their lives and for the state of the world. John didn't come into a world where everything was going fine. It was a world scarred and disfigured by the oppression of the many by the few, by state-sponsored violence, by greed, by the exploitation of the powerful of the powerless. John comes standing in the waters of the Jordan, excoriating the people to see the chaos around them and to make a change. And then Jesus wades in next to him. Imagine that moment where Jesus stands and looks down and sees his own reflection in the face of the river. It is creation happening all over again. 
The wind blows down the river as John scoops up the water and it pours over Jesus' head. A voice breaks the silence. You are my child and with you I am well pleased. And just as before, there is light in the darkness. As it was in the beginning, here God is in the world, wrestling order from chaos. This time by proclaiming good news to the poor, release to every captive. God is in the world to speak peace to the world's strongest army, to feed the hungry as others hoarded their excess, to restore dignity to all in a world that afforded dignity to some and stripped it from others, to forgive our failure, to free us into love. When John and Jesus arrive, the earth had yet again become a darkness covering the face of the deep. But when God's spirit moves on the face of the waters, God is making order from chaos, through and in and with Jesus. There's not one beginning in the Bible. There are many, many stories of beginning. But they continue, they contain echoes of the same theme. When the earth was a formless void, God ordered the chaos and made a good creation. When injustice reigned in human life, God gave us Jesus to reorder lives from the inside out. When the earth was dark and its saviour had been laid in a tomb, on the third day he rose again to show for all time that there is no disorder that the love of God cannot remake. There is no chaos that God's love cannot turn into something beautiful. Today we need this idea of God creating good out of our own chaoses. The chaos of Covid, Trump's chaos, Brexit, poverty, racial injustice. And once again this morning we are able to ask ourselves how does this all begin? How where do we begin? When did the Spirit of God hover over the chaos of our life, call us by our name and deliver us into a good and blessed place? Beginnings matter. They tell us who we are and whose we are. They tell us where we're going and even who we will meet when we reach the end, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. You might like to pause the video at this point to have a little think about the words you've just heard. So now we turn to our bread and the wine or other drink that we've prepared for ourselves for our spiritual communion and hear the story once more of the Last Supper. Among friends, gathered around a table, Jesus took bread, and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which is given for you. In the same way, he took wine. And having given thanks for it, he poured it out. He gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Take this and share it. I shall drink wine with you next in the coming kingdom of God. So now, following Jesus' example, we take this bread and this wine, the ordinary things of the world, through which God will bless us. And as Jesus offered us, offered thanks for the gifts of the earth, let us also celebrate God's goodness. Blessed are you, O God, for you have brought forth bread from the earth. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the fruit of the vine. In the beginning you watered the earth, that men and women might have food and drink. You gave to your servant Sarah bread to strengthen her family on the journey, and wine to make her glad. You called Moses and his people out of bondage and refreshed them with food in the wilderness. You gave Mary and Jesus their daily bread to share. And here at your table, you offer us bread and wine for the journey to nourish us as daughters and sons. 
And so with all our brothers and sisters before us and beside us, we praise you from our hearts for your unending greatness. Lord Jesus Christ, present with us now, as we do in this place what you did in an upstairs room, breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that they may be heaven's food and drink for us, renewing, sustaining and making us whole, and that we may be your body on earth, loving and caring in the world. Let us pray. Loving God, at the beginning of another year, we acknowledge once again that everything is made by you. Without you was not anything made that was made. We acknowledge that you need our hands and our feet, our hearts and our minds, to build your kingdom on earth. Make us worthy of this calling. Lord, renew us with your spirit. Lord, your love embraces all of creation. Your voice rolls over the waters. Your glory thunders over the oceans. Give us the steadiness and skill to use the gifts you have blessed us with, that the wise use of the earth's resources may enable all that grows on the earth to flourish. You who offer stillness in the eye of the storm, give us the blessing of your peace. Lord, renew us with your spirit. As we are united in the common bond of our baptism, help us to break down the barriers that keep us apart. As you have loved us, help us to love those whom we live amongst. Teach us to delight in our differences as much as the things we have in common. Teach us to learn from each other and teach us to bear with one another's failings. Lord, renew us with your spirit. Lord, look with compassion on those whose lives are bruised, who feel they are stranded in the desert, or whose hopes are crushed. We remember all who have lost confidence. We pray for the world weary, the worn and the lost. Give them and us new life and hope through your life-giving spirit, so that immersed in your presence, we may feel buoyed up by the knowledge that underneath are your everlasting arms. Father, we commend into your loving hands those who were close to us and close to you in this life, and now are closer still. We commend those who were far off and are making their way toward your light. May we at the last pass through the deep waters of death to life eternal with you. Lord, renew us with your spirit. We ask God's blessing, especially on those for whom our prayers have been asked. For June, Betty and Denise. We pray for the family and friends of Doreen Sutton, Richard Ayling, Robin Ware and Liz Black, who have died. We ask your blessing on all who mourn and the family and friends of Frederick Coker and Herbert Savage, whose anniversary of death fall at this time. And we pray for ourselves that through this day and in the days that lie before us, we know we may know you close to us, beside, within and around us, holding us, loving us day by day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Taking our bread and our wine, look, the bread of heaven is broken for the life of the world, the gifts of God for the people of God. So now you're invited to Eat your piece of bread and share your drink and wine together.
Jesus stood with his friends and said, My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you're with someone today, you're invited to share a sign of God's peace with those who are with you. Peace be with you. Our final song today, uh, also from the Teze community, O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Now, one of the undoubted benefits from worshipping together in this way is that there seem to be week by week fewer and fewer notices to give out. And there really aren't many notices to give out this week. Um, Really only to say that the pattern of our worship while we continue in lockdown will be to alternate these spiritual communion communion services with a service of the word recorded in church. So the service available next Sunday will be a service recorded uh, next week uh, at St George's, which uh, Duncan Graham and anybody who can be cajoled to read and pray uh, will do together uh, during the week. So that will be available uh, for you by next weekend. And then we'll be back to celebrating uh, spiritual communion the week after that. And we'll alternate as the weeks go on. We've planned a pattern to take us all the way up to Palm Sunday at the end of March. And we will hold in our prayer very closely the prospect that we might be able to be back together at that point uh, as we approach Holy Week and Easter. But we'll see. And we'll carry on like this uh, week by week uh, while we need to. Um, It's worth saying also that uh, St George's will be open for private prayer, as we have been previously on these sort of occasions, on Tuesday mornings at 9.30 until 11.30. Uh, And for anyone who needs to come at a later time, something we haven't done before, we'll open in the evening. So on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock until 8.30, will open for private prayer as well. Uh, Entry as previously through the garden vestry door by the labyrinth. So Tuesdays, 9.30 till 11, uh, 9.30 till 11.30, and Thursday evenings from 7 to 8.30. Thank you. So we'll finish with our closing responses, which you're invited to join in with if you'd like to. On our hearts, and on our homes, the blessing of God. In our coming and our going, the peace of God. In our life and in our searching, the love of God. At our end and new beginning, the arms of God to welcome us and bring us home. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain falls soft upon your fields. And until we are able to meet again, may God hold you safe in the palm of her hand. And the blessing of God, the one who makes us, walks with us and inspires us, 
fill you with love and joy and peace this day and always. Amen. Live in peace to love and serve God. In the name of Christ. Amen. I hope you all continue well. It's been lovely to be able to be with you again in this distance way, but spiritually close. And I look forward to the next time we're able to be together in this way and as well as physically. Bye bye, everybody. See you soon.